I'm going to show you how to quantify Western blots. So the first step after imaging is you're going to select the file that the images are saved on. Right here, this is the file I'll be selecting. Once you've opened up the file, you're going to see all these different documents. We want to select the MSCN documents. These will be the MSCN images. These are the images produced from the multi-image. So we open it up, and it will automatically open up with Image Lab software, the program. Now we have three different blots in front of us. We are going to be using the chemiluminescent blot. So we select it. And we go over to the left to lane and bands. Under lanes, we see lane finder and we can go to manual. Now you can select how many lanes you want. We could increase or decrease, but we're going to stick with four today. Press OK. And four lanes will automatically pop up. We want to take the corners and drag it so that we can perfectly or near perfectly fit our blots. From here, now that I feel it's fine, we're going to go to bands. We're going to select one of the lanes just by clicking on it on the blot. Now I see it's selected, it's in red. I go back to lanes and now we can manipulate it. We're going to zoom in and center using the scroll wheel. And now we can manipulate the lanes in order to include the entirety of the band. It's a little tricky. You have to select the center if you want to move it. And you select these corner boxes or these uh, horizontal boxes in order to change the length. So again, I'm going to move center and center. From here, once you manipulated your lanes, you're going to go to bands. Under bands, you say add, and you're going to select each band by clicking on it. And it will automatically detect the band and the range. Now, if you want to adjust the range of band detection, you would go up to Lane Profile. From Lane Profile, we can focus on different lanes. So we'll start off at 1, Lane 1. And we can move these parameters to include or not include areas, but I'm going to keep it as is. Once you're done, you exit out, and from here we're ready to run the report. Once you click report, a PDF will pop up. We want to scroll down until we find the chemiluminescent blot right here, channel 2, chemiluminescent. And under it, we can find our lane statistics. So to save the file, we go to the top left corner under PDF, and it will save it to the same folder which your images are saved on. So we press Save. Now that we've saved it, we can exit out exit out and I recommend saving saving the changes now at the top we see our PDF if you open it up we will scroll down again under chemiluminescence we see our our blot right here and here is the lane statistics now in order to calculate 
or really quantify our blots, we need to use Excel. Here is an example. We will be using PARP1 as our as the protein that we're detecting. And HDAC will be our loading control. And this is what we have information on. This is what we have data on. Now, I have previously entered numbers into the adjusted band volume. So I'm going to enter in the adjusted band volume for HDAC. Now we see adjusted total band volume. This is the data that we want to use. So I'm going to select, copy, and paste. Again, select, copy, and paste. Now I'm making sure that I have record of which lane corresponds to which treatment. It's important that you match it up. So as you can see, the fourth one was a, BB, a BBGC and an Olaparp treatment. Now you can see my values automatically popped up. This is because I've set a formula. Here's an example. All you have to do is take the adjusted band volume of the experimental protein and Divide it by. Okay, I found this on the web for mental protein. Check it out. Sorry, that was my Siri. And divide it by the loading control. So this is B7 divided by B16. Once you've done it once, you can take that formula and just drag it down from the green square. So it's already been done, but. Now we're not done yet, we need to normalize the data. In order to normalize the data, we're going to use our DMSO control and we're going to divide each PARP over HDAC or experimental overloading control just as such. So the first one, the DMSO control, should equal 1 because it's the 1.16 divided by itself. The second will be the BBGC over the DMSO control. The third is incorrect. It should be the Olaparb over the DMSO control just like that. Let's make sure that this is correct. It is not. Again, the BBGC and Olaparb over the DMSO control. Great. Now that our data is corrected, we create a graph For the purposes of this video, I'll delete this and I'll show you how we make our graph. We want to select this data, which is the name of each treatment. And we're going to also select at the same time the normalized values. From here, we go to insert, you go under charts, we want a two-dimensional bar, char bar chart. That didn't work.
insert. There we go. I recommend adding axes titles and chart titles. But overall, here is the data. We can also adjust the parameters at which it's set. So just by double clicking, I can adjust the bounds. Now it's out of three, but I'll keep it out of two. And that's it.